in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we lift our hands to heaven and ask him for an encounter? God's method has always been his word. Lift your voice and ask him that by his word he will appear unto you. Someone is praying, let it be from the depth of your heart. Appear unto me, set me on fire, let me become a light and may the Lord bless you. I want to charge our hearts teaching along the theme. I trust that the word of God will bless our hearts in no small way. And I also pray that whilst you listen, that the power of God will rest upon you. And that everything that represents darkness in your life will give way in the name of Jesus. For the book of John chapter 1 verse 5 says, The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, I'll begin my reading from verse 13. Matthew chapter 5, this is Jesus teaching. Um, what we know theologically to be the beatitude so he's teaching them the principles of the kingdom and when he gets to verse 13 Matthew 5 he says ye are the salt of the earth hallelujah and he said if the salt has lost its saltiness or its savour, wherewith shall it be salted he said it is good for nothing except to be thrown down and to be trodden under foot of men then he says, ye are the light of the world. He says, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp, it says, and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a lampstand or a candlestick. And then it gives light to all who are in the room. Then he leaves us with a very strong instruction, verse 16. He says, let your light. The word let there means permit, allow, do not restrict. Let your light so shine before men, he says, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, from a theological standpoint, believers are classified twofold. Please listen. Theologically speaking, the Bible classifies believers, number one, based on identity and then number two based on function believers are classified based on identity so we have names like heirs of god joint heirs with christ jesus says i am the vine and ye are the branches you find that in john 15 are we together now the bible calls us the righteousness of god in christ these are all descriptions attempting to show our oneness with Christ as a result of salvation. So believers are classified based on identification. But the second is classification based on function. Because remember man was created in the image of God and the likeness of God. The image of God meaning his character, his glory, his likeness means to function like him. Hallelujah. And then classification based on function. Now the Bible begins to use words like light, words like salt, words like kings, words like priests, words like ambassadors. These are all active words that demand responsibility and action. Are we together now? And so he says in Matthew chapter 5 that you are the salt of the earth. Now, salt essentially has two functions, as we generally know. Number one, it is to add taste and value. Hallelujah. And it says you are that salt. And did you know that it is never too late to add salt in any meal? There are ingredients that when you miss the timing, you've ruined that meal, but not salt. Even if the food is already served, it is not too late to add salt. Hallelujah. So he says you are the salt of the earth. The second assignment of salt is to preserve. It was an ancient strategy that was used to preserve things before advancement in technology opened up more doors for a more superior ways of advancement. He says you are the salt of the earth. Then he says you are the light of the world. He likens the believer to a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden 
in other words visibility is the destiny of every believer that on no account should any believer be locked up in mediocrity be locked up in defeat he says you are a city not like a city a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden then he says neither do men light a lamp provided that lamp is lit it is not permitted to be under are we together now he said it is not proper to light a lamp and put it under when you light a candle and put it under it will become destructive am i right because it sustains the quality to burn it will burn everything above it because it is supposed to be above so anything that is above that candle it interprets it as an enemy even if it's your bed or your table it begins to burn it so the character of a candle is not supposed to be under that provided there is light on that candle it must be above does that look like what the bible say about i say about you that you will be above only and not beneath shout a loud amen so it says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but that that lamp is put on a lampstand and that it gives light to everyone in the room he says in that similitude having this understanding let your light so shine before men god wants them to see your good deeds and by it they will glorify your father in heaven now it is important ladies and gentlemen to understand results are profiting for the kingdom it's important to know that when believers bear fruit that is how jesus is glorified in john chapter 15 when you begin to read from verse 8 the bible says herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples 15 and verse 16 of the same john it says you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit is that true and it says that this fruit should abide or remain so he desires that we go and we bear fruit jesus is glorified when his children are glorified john chapter 17 and verse 1 the bible says jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and he prayed this prayer he said father the hour is come he says glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee galatians 1 and verse 24 the bible says and they glorified god in me god can be glorified in a man if that man is you shout a loud amen. amen that means a man can become a reason for God to be glorified across a territory that when people look at you and they see the excellency of the workings of the spirit in your life the kind and the quality of results that come from your Christian experience it is able to birth glory that men will look at such an individual and say indeed God is good may that be your testimony that from tonight the results that begin to unfold from your life they will cause that your life becomes a living epistle in the name of Jesus Christ Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 Paul says he says we are his workmanship you know what that means a workmanship means the tools that an artist or whoever uses so if you are a carpenter your workmanship talks of the hammer the chisel and all you need the Bible says we are his workmanship that means every time God wants to manifest the dimension of his glory the tools that he will use are men you and I we are his workmanship Paul says he says created in Christ Jesus unto good works is that in your Bible which God had foreordained that we should work in that means God is not wondering what to do with your life and my life that there is a prophetic script that has been written whether you walk in that reality or not is a different thing altogether but that it is in your prophetic destiny to be great it is in your prophetic destiny to be the light do you believe that hallelujah it's important you convince yourself in 
blessing Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, when he called Abraham, who was at that time was an idol worshiper from Ur of the Chaldeans, he began to propose certain blessings that will come upon him. And he said, I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will bless them that bless you. He that curses you, I will curse. It says, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed that was a blessing unto Abraham Galatians 3 29 now says if ye be Christ it says then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that means everything he told Abraham is valid for you today through Christ hallelujah influence is the destiny of every believer in Christ Genesis 17 and verse 6 it says I will make you exceeding fruitful it says that our kings will come out of you, nobles out of your loins. He began to prophesy that you are not supposed to be small. I'm showing you all these scriptures to convince you once and for all that the destiny of greatness is your heritage in Christ. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1, it says, If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and to observe all that I command you this day, that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. And then it says, These blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Then he begins to list the blessings. My question is, do you believe? Because the Bible says, blessed is she that believes. For unto her, there shall be a performance of the things that were spoken of the Lord. Say after me, I am the head and not the tail. Say, I am a light to the nations. Hallelujah. If you are getting blessed already, shout a loud amen. In Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18, Isaiah 8 and verse 18, very powerful scripture. It says, I and the children, oh, we have it projected here. I and the children whom the Lord has given me. That means this blessing is not just for an individual. A family can step into it. That I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Look at me, please. A sign is a pointer when you are headed a location the moment you begin to see signs they tell you you are close to that location that means your life should point men from any direction they are coming from it should lead them to Jesus your life becomes a sign and then a wonder may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the Bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and he says great grace was upon them all great grace was upon them all in other words if my life and your life becomes barren of glory barren of results there is a dimension of glory we are robbing God from receiving on earth if your life does not communicate excellence and victory and glory this is why I know that everything that is not of God that has followed your life to this point in the name of Jesus standing upon the grace of our father I'm declaring to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead that it leaves you once and for all Let me give us three keys tonight that will help any man, and that includes you, to become a light indeed. A light in the United States, a light across the nations. There are no prejudices and there are no biases with God. The kingdom operates based on patterns. And if you understand the patterns that are allocated for every result, you will command that result. Because the Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. And it says the same Lord is rich unto all. You see, there are certain blessings in the kingdom that the Bible will say he gave unto some. But when it has to do with victory and exaltation, it is the destiny of all men. We have been raised up with Christ, it says, and we have been made to sit at his right hand that place of glory far above and it begins to list them principalities powers thrones dominions and every name that is named not only in this world but even in the world to come hallelujah 
three keys very quickly and I want you to please pay attention as we discuss these keys these are the keys that have turned ordinary men to become signs and wonders ordinary men to become lights beacons of light to their communities in business light in ministry light in politics and governance light in career light in family regardless the geography of your assignment if you understand believe and practice these principles that you are about to learn there will be no limitation to your rising Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, it says, shine. It says, for your light is come. Notice, it never says, arise and shine because you are tired of sitting down. In other words, time will not change any situation. It takes an active participation of light. Arise, shine, it says, for thy light is come. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. Then it says, for your light is come. It says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Then it says, for darkness shall cover the earth. Is the Hebrew word tohu wabohu, confusion and chaos. The same darkness we see in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness, the people, it says, that but upon you that light would rise. Verse 3, I love verse 3. It says, Gentiles shall come. You will not have to look for them. They will come. Gentiles shall come, not to you. Gentiles will not come to you. They will come to your light. That means if you are not carrying lights, there is no reason why they should come to you. Gentiles will come to your light and then the kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles, for someone as a result of this conference, men you did not expect, they will hear about you. They will hear about the workings of the spirit. I'm prophesying to you by the spirit of the living God. Strangers will call you and say, I have heard that your God is alive. I have heard that your God heals. I have heard that your God gives children to the barren. I have heard that your God can turn a man's life around. Show me that God. Please sit down. The Bible says where the carcasses are, it says there the eagles will gather. Hallelujah. Was it not John Wesley who said, set yourself on fire? And he says the whole world will come to watch you burn. When there was a burning bush, provided there was light and fire, Moses said, I will turn aside. When you become a light, you become too notable to be ignored. I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when God saw that he had turned aside, he said, Moses, now I have used light to get your attention. Take off your shoes from where thou standest is holy ground. Number one, the first key that can cause any believer to become the light, to manifest as light, is called an experience with God. Please write it down. The first biblical requirement to becoming a light indeed is to have an experience with God. Hmm. The God you experience is the God you reveal to your world. The God you experience is the God you reveal to your world. The God you experience is the God you reveal to your world. Hallelujah. In Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32, let's hurry for time. Daniel 11 and verse 32, the B part says, but the people that do know their God, notice, he says, they are God. They are God. Whatever that means to you. The people that do know they are God, they shall be strong upon the strength of that knowledge and they shall do exploits. Not talk exploits. Exploits is not a discussion. It's a doing. The people that do know they are God, they shall be strong. Capacity stamina and they shall do exploits hallelujah 
An experience with God, I wrote here, is the basis for your confidence in this kingdom. The believer's com confidence is derived from his experience with God. When you see men and women stand with audacity and face life without fear, it is not because they are not human. It's because they have outsourced confidence from an experience that is greater than any circumstance. Why will you fear when you have met the burning bush? Who is Pharaoh when you have met the God of the Bible? Listen, fear is proof that there is need for a higher encounter in your life. Because the character of encounters among the many things they produce is that they erode fear. Confidence is not just a, is not just a mechanical manifestation of a bold face. No. No. When you have seen the Lord, when you have encountered the Lord, when he speaks to you through his word and says you are the head, no matter what else tells you are the tail, you don't even worry because he has spoken. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power belongs to God. Hallelujah. So when God says I am lifting you, and men say you will not rise you watch them in shock and wonder hoping they get to learn a lesson once again that there is a God that rules in the affairs of men listen believers we are not a weak and a beggarly people our weakness is a report card is a proof that we have not encountered the God of the Bible read your Bible and watch ordinary men who were transited to a bold fashion of them at the instance of their encounters a stammerer called Moses with no leadership ability whatsoever he meets the God of the Bible and receives a mandate and with that boldness he stands before Pharaoh he says I came with a message let my people go they have been for 30 430 years the longevity of the captivity notwithstanding I have come to advocate their exodus a young boy called Gideon who was hiding the least in his father's house as soon as he encountered a mighty God he says you are a mighty man of fellow he did not call him and describe him by his fear then he says go in this your might something has come upon your spirit and the Bible says Gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 people showed up When men encounter God, they start behaving like God. When men encounter God, they start behaving like God. How do I know that? The Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed into the same image we are looking at. It says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty then it says we all with unveiled face beholding him as in a mirror we are changed you are changed to what you are beholding when you behold weakness you will become weakness when you behold defeat you will become defeat are we together the righteous are as bold as a lion is that not what the Bible says? I'm not talking of destructive boldness that leads to law and order. I'm talking of confidence that is derived from knowing that he stands behind you like a mighty terrible one. Hallelujah. It is true that when God has vowed to lift a man up, woe betides the man who stands your way. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I am bold. I reject fear. 
Say it, I reject fear. Open your mouth in one minute and pray. I reject the spirit of fear, the fear of the future, the fear of my destiny, the fear of my children making it. For God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Someone is praying, I reject fear. I reject fear. As a student, pray. I reject fear. It's been five years without a child, but I reject fear. Ten years without a job, but I reject fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. An experience with God. Please listen to me. An experience with God will demand hunger and thirst. You are never going to find God if you are casual about him. It takes a desperation that is greater than looking for money. A desperation that is greater than looking for fame. A desperation that is greater than looking for titles. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me only when you seek me with all your heart. When you seek God as an extra advantage to be added to your life. After all, you already have many more things. You will never find God that way. His jealousy demands that you seek him above everything everything if you're a man of God here respectfully speaking let me beckon on you to listen because end time ministry demands an encounter beyond oratory situations and circumstances will ask you who sent you mm. the sicknesses will ask you who sent you when you say be healed don't you think Satan will just quietly go uh -uh. did he not say who is the king of glory when he said lift up your head the gates replied back and then there was an answer the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle hallelujah the miraculous flows from a place of genuine hunger Lord, I need you more than a job. I need you more than children. You are my life. You are not just a religious advantage to my life. I have learned the value of pursuing your presence. These are the kinds of people who will become light to the nations. Men and women who through hunger, they have used the currency of hunger to buy an encounter. Mm, because hunger is a currency you can use it to buy an encounter in Genesis chapter 32 Jacob was so hungry for an encounter the Bible says when he was alone then came this man ah I sense such a strong anointing in this place such a strong anointing in this place such a strong anointing I believe that the Holy Spirit is doing something supernatural, supernatural, supernatural in someone's life. I believe that healings are happening as you are listening. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. The Bible says, while Peter yet spake these things, it says the Holy Ghost fell on all they that heard him. Hallelujah. Listen, let me encourage you. I know that we live in a busy world today and I know that responsibility demands that we are occupied trying to make ends meet. But let me bring you a word of encouragement. It says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. My Bible, I don't know about yours, my Bible says, the watchmen watch it but in vain. It says it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow he says but he giveth his beloved sleep hear me one counsel of the spirit in the place of encounter can redefine the next 20 years of your life we need to reawaken a generation to understand the value of his presence the presence of God and the pursuit of spiritual things is not an interruption to your becoming great. It is the reason why you become great. 
a great job minus God is only a cycle of frustration coming intellectual prowess minus an encounter eventually you will know that any the horse can be prepared for battle but in truth safety is of the Lord by this first point already I'm charging someone's heart that you need to be angry at the fact that other things are taking the place of God in your life and by this conference begin to redefine your priorities the place of prayer, the place of the word, the place of fellowship. That when people say, are you not busy running around? You will tell them, I have learned that running around without God will only waste my energy. i rather stay and ask him, should I pursue? Should I pursue? And one answer from his majesty can say, pursue and overtake and without fail, recover all. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible mandates that the believer walks circumspectly. The word circumspect means accurately because the unit of destiny is time. Whatever you give your time to, you are giving a portion of your life and your destiny to. So you do not have the time to keep guessing and shadow boxing your life only to find out after 15 years you were at the wrong direction, then return back again. The Bible says that template is not a victorious template. This is why he gave us the Holy Spirit. This is why encounters are platforms for accuracy. With precision, you can know the next direction. For there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the Bible says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Number two, please be seated. I just saw like a veil a veil this is what I'm seeing a veil just lifted from someone in the name of Jesus I prophesy over someone that veil that has covered your glory so that no man can see Christ revealed in the name that is above all names we tear that veil now in the name of Jesus, we tear that veil now. That veil in your business, that veil in your family, that veil in your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. I hope you believe what you're hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. There are men who fear God too much to give you cunningly devised fables. The things that you hear by the grace of God are the things we have seen. The things we have heard and by grace the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life number two the second key to being a light even a light to the nations is faith the law of faith faith is a prerequisite for manifesting the glory of God what is faith the name given to the action of obedience you take that is a reflection of your conviction the name given to the action not the believing the believing is not faith the action you take to support that believing is what the Bible calls faith I am believing God correct but it's still a journey you've not manifested faith faith is the name I repeat please given to the action we have our lovely protocol people stationed across this beautiful auditorium imagine with me for a moment that i called on one of them say the gentleman in front and i say sir come and he keeps saying i am coming and he does not come has he obeyed is he manifesting faith so there are many people who keep saying my life is great but they keep saying it in disobedience and they keep recycling disappointments forever faith in one word is obedience faith in one word is obedience no matter what you do that you call faith if it does not culminate to obedience it is not Bible faith God is only committed at the point of obedience if it be thou bid me come he said come and Peter began to walk he was not walking on water you can't walk on water he was walking on the Word of God 
the word of God was defending him while he was walking. It looks like he was walking on water. You try walking on water and see what happens. It couldn't have been water. He was walking on the word. Hallelujah. So, you want the glory of God, for instance, to be revealed in your finances. Just claiming the promises will leave you in disappointment. You have to understand the principles that God has put and obtain grace to walk in keeping. Let me give you a few of them. Number one is called the law of diligence. It says that a diligent hand shall be made fat. So if you are not diligent, you are going to be poor. It's as simple as that. Number two, it says there is he that scattereth and yet withholdeth more than his meat. There is he... And then it tends to poverty. Ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, that even though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6, it says, This I say, he that soweth sparingly, he shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully, he shall reap bountifully. It says, every man as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give. Is that true? Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 9 says, verse 8 now, it says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that ye having sufficiency in all things, that you will abound to every good work. These are principles. So the believer who wants to see the glory of God revealed in his finances will not only claim the promises, but find the responsibility component of those promises and now obtain grace to begin to walk in keeping with them. I repeat one more time that faith is obedience. For instance, the Bible says the keys that control longevity. Number one, it says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, and I advise that you choose life. How do you choose life? Number one, by verbalizing it. Number two, by walking in keeping with the principles that lead to life. Then number two, he says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. It says that you may live long and that it shall be well with you. So as you honor your parents, both physical and spiritual, you are programming longevity. Number three, he says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That means if you are alive and you are not declaring the works of the Lord, you do not qualify for another life. That your longevity is predicated upon your usefulness to the kingdom. If your life becomes such a plus to the kingdom, God's jealousy defends you that this kind of vessel needs to live long. Hallelujah. He said he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Faith. It's important that we learn to walk by faith. And I hope you know that when it has to do with faith, you cannot take the word of God out because the word of God is the basis for faith. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, he says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. John 1 and verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says that by him or through him all things were made and without him was not anything made that was made. That means outside of the word nothing can be made. The word of God is the maker. The maker of destinies. The maker of all kinds of good things. When you reject the word of God, and you do not have an appetite for the word of God, there is no possibility for faith to be built in you. And according to scripture, there are four levels of faith. You may just write for your understanding and then I talk about the last point and we wrap up. Number one, there is a realm of no faith, zero faith. It is possible that a man can have zero faith, no faith. That means no kingdom results whatsoever. Number two, little faith. Number three, great faith. Number four, exceeding great faith. All these four levels were seen in the life and the ministry of Jesus. No faith, little faith, great faith, 
exceeding great faith. So when our Father in the Lord stands here and says, can I bless you? And he says, may God bless you. And you begin to hear testimonies. I guarantee you, those faith levels are like currency. $1,000 cannot buy a house of a million dollars. Am I right on that? Mm -mm. So if your faith for use of expression is just $1,000 worth, and what you want to purchase is $10 million worth, you will have to grow your faith. Many believers are claiming things and dimensions that their faith level cannot purchase. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. 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 And now you grow to a realm of exceeding great faith. And you can command supernatural possibilities in the kingdom. That leaves you becoming in experience a light. Number three. Is someone learning tonight? So the first is an experience with God. The second is your faith. Robust faith that is able to bring the manifestation of the word of God to you. Number three. The third key that is responsible for becoming the light in experience is called the anointing. Hmm. The anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus emphatically, having mentored the disciples for a period of three and a half years, he emphatically forbade them from living until they were empowered you would think that having the correct information was enough for them to be witnesses he said tarry i give you a precaution if you live with just information you will be disappointed there is an engracing that must come to empower what you know tarry until ye be endued with power then the bible says in acts chapter 1 and verse 8 in fact from verse 7 the disciples, when Jesus rose again, you know the story. He gathered them and was together with them for a period of 40 days. And then 10 days after was Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? He said, it is not for you to know the times that the Father has put within his care. Verse 8 now says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And it says that power will make you witnesses. Another expression for light. A witness is a validator of a claim. He says, it shall make you witnesses. In Jerusalem, he says, in Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. So they obeyed faith and they waited patiently. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. He says, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, having obeyed his voice and tarried, the Bible says they were together in one accord, suddenly. Ah, like it will happen to someone this night. Like it will happen to someone this week. Suddenly, suddenly, there was a sound from heaven. Came and filled the room. And the Bible says they saw cloven tongues as of fire. It came and rested upon every one of them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The result of that encounter, 3,000 people coming to Jesus. When Peter was done with them, teaching them, he said, this is that. And he began from Prophet Joel down to David and then to the ministry of Jesus. He says, let it be known unto you that the same Jesus whom you have crucified has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. Scripture records that they were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what do we do? He says, repent for the remission of your sins. And then you shall receive this promise. For the promise is unto you, to your children, your children's children, even as many as the Lord your God will call. 3,000 people as a result of empowerment. They never had that kind of result when he sent them two by two. When he sent them seven by seven. They only came and said demons were subject to us in your name. But nobody could be translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. 
But when the Holy Spirit came with that power, 3,000 people, you know what it means for 3,000 souls to be open to receive Jesus. And that began the journey. In Acts chapter 10, the salvation of the Gentiles, Peter, beckoned by the Spirit to come to the house of Cornelius, the Bible says, while Peter spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell upon all they that heard him. That was where the salvation of the Gentiles began. When you ignore the anointing of the Holy Spirit, your life will never be supernatural. You will never in truth be a sign and a wonder. And you will never truly manifest as light. Do you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Now, I tell you the truth, the anointing is not just for preachers. I think I said it in, in one of my teaching sessions that for most people, when we talk about empowerment and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, usually people who are not preachers just shut down on it and they say, no, you just leave that for pastors and, you know, they are the ones who really need it. I'm a businessman. What do I need the anointing for? I just need partners. I just need a policy that supports my growth. No. No, no, no. It takes power. Even wealth takes power. Is there no something called the power to get wealth? There is the wisdom to get wealth, but there is the power to get wealth. Wise men get wealth. Strong men retain wealth. It's in the Bible. Hallelujah. There are two biblical ways to receive the anointing. Let me wrap up with this. You want to become the light? You want to manifest as light? Now watch this. The candle that gives light has potential to continue to burn. But that candle remains barren and unfruitful until you use a matchstick or whatever device to place light on it. But the moment light comes, it starts to burn. And it can burn for hours and hours. And you will think the candle should be tired. It will burn for hours. The light only stops when the candle itself dies. Am I right on that? So you are that light. Do you know light does not get tired? No. It is the bulb that gets faulty. Light itself does not get tired. The sun that you see is older than everybody seated here. Yet the sun has never said, I'm tired. I've tried. I've been shining for so long. It is not in the character of light to be weak. Light does not become weak. Light does not become weary. There is a self-sustaining strategy within light that keeps it shining. empowerment number one the first way we are empowered in the kingdom is by a direct encounter from God very very important for us to know this that a man can have an encounter with the God of the Bible and from that encounter you can receive empowerment Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 I will always like people to read the first four verses if we can see it projected, please let's read together. Acts chapter 10, 38. The first four words. First four words. Ready? One to read. One more time. One more time. Who anointed Jesus? God can anoint men. How God anointed Jesus. How God anointed Solomon. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings and the Bible would tell us that he had an encounter and God asked him to make a wish and he prayed for an understanding heart as against the life of his enemies and he said because you asked for this I will give you an understanding heart and with it will come riches, wealth and honor as no man has had. He got up, you would think he was an ordinary man except that his life began to change. The excellency of wisdom, the manifestation of power, the order that followed his life were testaments that he had received from God. I'm praying for someone. 
in the name of Jesus Christ there are dimensions of power that your destiny needs at this point whether in business whether in ministry whether in family may you have an encounter with God that translates to power in the name of Jesus Christ when Jacob had an encounter with God power was the result of that encounter the impact of that power was so strong that his name was changed from Jacob the cheat and the supplanter even unto Israel hallelujah so the first key is an encounter with God if you desire power the second and the final key that I would give us is through a mystery called impartation please write impartation is a transference of grace you can receive an impartation of power from those who truly carry that grace when you study the parable of the ten virgins the Bible says that the five they were all virgins but the mistake was that all of them had the lamp and the lamp was signifying the Word of God but a, a number of them did not face the issue of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and power they did not contend for sufficient power it took the oil for the lamp to keep burning so for the other five when the lamp went off the advice they received is go to them that sell and buy that means there are those who sell there are custodians of that oil as scarce as the oil looks there are men who have it in abundance he said find them take the responsibility and we are so fortunate to have in our midst tonight men and women with proven graces these are men that are custodians of the power of God let me admonish you in advance that as our mother and our father come and stand here to speak prophetic blessings please do not be familiar open your heart and receive they have proven through their lives that they are the them that you should go and buy. How do you buy? You buy with the currency of hunger. You buy with the currency of meekness. You buy with the currency of humility. You buy with the currency of discernment. Go to them that sell. I lack wisdom. Go to them that sell with their results showing and buy. I lack favor go to them that sell did the Bible not say follow them who through faith and patience what is a prayer point for you has long been someone's manifestation every result is governed by graces the house you want to buy there are people who have bought hundreds of them tens of them there is a grace listen once results are sustained they are sponsored by a grace you cannot have sustainable results by luck and I can tell you our parents in the Lord here and I, this is not just some preacher trying to act political for for want of word I can tell you that their lives are testaments that by their covenant and their sacrifice with God they have become them that sell them that sell them that sell hallelujah Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God he says for no man can do these miracles except God be with him there are results that when you see whether you use the lens of intellect or the lens of spirituality you will arrive at the same conclusion God has to be with you to produce some results if God is not with you there's no amount of gimmicks and manipulation it can only go so far sustainable decades old result is proof that an anointing has come upon you let me stand upon their grace tonight to speak over someone in the name of Jesus that barrenness of power that barrenness of grace wallowing around in confusion whereas you belong to a family of power in the name of Jesus let grace come upon you let power come upon you let grace come upon you let power come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ power in business power in ministry power and career in the name of Jesus please sit down we're wrapping up I have about five minutes or so why do you need power 
because there are wicked forces that are determined that your destiny will not rise i hope you know that the bible tells us that we are of god and the whole world lieth in wickedness apostle but i did not offend anybody the condition to be attacked is that you are born once you arrive here you are a candidate for an attack what did Jesus do to be attacked? What did Moses do to be attacked? Just because Moses was born, many children lost their lives. Satan is that determined to find you. He is that determined to look for your destiny. Apostle, I don't know why it looks like the doors, the gates of America has just been closed. I'm a sincere person. I love God. People want to help me. But just when it's time to seal the deal, it looks like an invisible force comes. You are right. And it will remain so except power comes into the scene. The language of victory is power. The language of victory is power. One more time. The language of victory is power. Listen. Psalm 66 and verse 3. My Bible says, Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy works. It says, Through the greatness of thy power, not the greatest of thy sympathy, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 